What's up, my diggers? Uh, my last video you guys watched was me announcing um, the format of my channel was going to be more techy stuff. It's a coin spader. And uh, that's on YouTube, coin spader. Go check him out. And uh, he said that he has uh, an old compass metal detector that uh, he just can't seem to get it to, to do what it's supposed to do, which is work. So, um, doesn't know anything about it, doesn't have a clue, neither do I, but it's old school technology. Let me show you one of these deals here, okay? Um, so I'm going to tear into this thing slowly and one piece at a time. I can already see that uh, it looks like it's been stored in a damp location. All the screw heads are pretty rusty. Some green corrosion on the coil contacts. That could mean that the contacts are really corroded and just need to be cleaned up real good or it could be that this thing is so far gone it's really not worth the parts so to speak um, but let's tear into it and see what we find all right the right, first thing Thanks I want to watching. do is get into this battery compartment here I've already had this open and taken a peek at it just to see what I was up against before I rolled camera and I already found one thing see how I've got one of these unplugged um, this thing takes an absolute army of batteries to work, which is just insane how many batteries this thing needs. So, anyway, see it goes in these little four packs, but it's got a 9 volt connector. Common problem with these older units was that people would get them from a yard sale or something and not have these uh, four trip four double a battery packs and they would see the end on there like that and figure oh needs a nine volt so they go and throw three nine volts in there okay which is uh technically almost 30 volts when it's only supposed to be um 18 so you overpower the unit and, and starts burning stuff out but anyway, as I took that pack out, I noticed this. Okay, the negative wire has come off of the little terminal. I've got a new one already. We're gonna um, we're gonna try and see if I can find enough of my repair stuff that my kids haven't messed with to solder a new one of those in line. Um, but yeah, so there's another battery pack, another battery pack. They're labeled A, B, and C. So are the wires. So far, one problem. Mm-hmm. So here's the one with the busted wire. Okay, here's the replacement. We'll go... It'll be a little bit longer, but it'll be all right. All right. <clears throat> Something weird's going on now. Um, we may just have a bad unit here. We're going to find out in a second. So I've got it in a position where I figured out what this switch is for and why there's a mercury switch on the toggle switch. This is for the speaker. Um, speaker on, speaker off kind of thing where you can just be in silent mode or it's not so loud. Uh, this is your power and volume. This is your battery check, okay? So we can check one, check two, check three, and see that they're all in the good, okay? Um, anything over that 100 mark right there for your battery check is okay. So we'll turn that off. We'll turn our sensitivity all the way down. I don't think we need to discriminate anything, really. Uh, ground tuning, I, I don't know if this is a... It just spins around and around. I'm not going to leave it, I'm not going to change it too, too much. I'm not sure about that. I believe it's ground balance, but 
I'm not exactly sure how it works on a pot. And tuning, again, I'm not real sure. I'm going to leave it uh, somewhere around 12 o'clock. So now we got all our battery packs hooked up, tested as good. Uh, our coil's still not hooked up. It's, it's, it's right here. So let's give this thing a whirl and see what happens. Well, it must be some kind of self-test. <coughs> Excuse me. You saw it peg and the audio went. Let's try it again. I don't have the volume turned up, but ready? So that must be charging up or some sort of a self-test of some kind. Let's hook up the coil and do that again. Coil is now plugged in. You can see it goes around to here. Now I know it's right near metal, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get completely away from all metal, anything metal. So that's why I figured I'll leave it on my leg and we'll turn the discrim up so it doesn't, hopefully it doesn't pick up any stupid iron. But let's watch the meter as we turn it on now. And it just pegs it. <laughs> Weird. Does that mercury switch have anything to do with it? No. Just a solid tone. Okay, that shuts the speaker off. And we can just look at the meter. Hmm. I'm thinking the coil might be bad. Let me test the coil. That's not right. We got standard and discrimination. Put it in discrim. Turn that all the way up. Still pegging it. I bet you it's a dead short in this coil. There we go. All right. I suspect the coil's bad. Let me uh, see if I can test the coil. Maybe we've got a dead short in the coil. I'll be right back. All right. So what I've done is I figured out first off that uh, it has a coil cover on it. I got that off. It's in really, really decent shape. I mean, it doesn't look like it's ever, like, struck soil. There's the coil underneath it. Here's the bottom, obviously not touched at all. But the two pieces are glued together. I've taken my uh, knife here and separated the glue joint. Oh, here we go. It's open now. Spray foam. I don't know if we're going to be able to see anything on this coil, if it's good or bad. And a whole bunch of epoxy. But look at the pattern. It's still pretty cool. So it's all epoxy filled. Um, I can't see anything obvious. I'll keep looking for a second here and uh, I'll get back to you guys. Transmit receive in normal mode or discrimination mode when you're just detecting. Pinpoint it's going to go like a double D almost into a figure eight pattern for your pinpointing to try and get right in the center. All right <clears throat> so I think we are at a dead end here buddy. Basically what I figured out is this right here um, this is a variable resistor you can see it's got like a little uh, screw head in the center of it there and you can actually adjust it. It's got a minimum and a maximum as far as resistance goes on ohms. Due to my uh, trusty multimeter over here, this doesn't change anything. I can turn it all the way up, I can turn it all the way down, and it doesn't change anything. So I believe that to be garbage. I don't know what it's supposed to be. I don't have the schematics on this coil. So I don't <coughs> excuse me. So I don't know what the values are supposed to be. Um, and I know for a fact that they don't make this particular PCB style variable resistor or pot or potentiometer, 
whatever name you want to give it. They don't make this kind anymore. It's just a little square box, and they're usually like a light blue and have a brass screw on the top of them, and you can adjust them that way. That's what we use nowadays. Um, so, I think we're at a dead end. I think this coil is junk. I'm not sure, but that's what they look like. And I don't have any of these. So, there you have it, Coin Spader. I think if you get a new coil for this thing, um, you'll be rocking and rolling. Everything else seems to work just the way it's supposed to. All your knobs and switches are, are uh, clicky and tight. Um, the meter, the meter works like it should for what it's doing now. Um, but again, I, I, I can't really test it completely. Yeah, so, and I do have one of those, if it fits, it ships boxes, the $6 one. And I'm going to add tonight, I'm going to add a couple of prizes to that box. And the plan is, uh, when the box is full, I'll do a drawing of some kind, some shape or form, and uh, produce a winner. So until, until next time, that I'm most definitely from